Do you see that? I drive by here all the time and never noticed that house before. My friend Mel was pointing at a gray building, the size of a barn, with no windows and only one big door. On top of the door was a sign written in red letters, Harry's Horror House. We were driving by it on our way to a corn maze one town over. There was a small parking space in front of it, so I slowly came to a stop so we could take a closer look at it. Weird. Must be some kind of pop-up, my other friend Jake said from the back seat. Well, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mel started grinning. She was the biggest fan of haunted houses you'll ever meet. She'd been dragging me and Jake to multiple ones every year around Halloween, ever since we'd gotten too old for trick-or-treating. Except for last year when Mel's sister disappeared from home. All she left was a short goodbye letter. Susie was a year older than us. She graduated a few months before disappearing. Their parents weren't really the caring kind, and they never got along with Susie. She had graduated and was old enough so it wasn't too odd that she wanted to leave. However, it was odd that she completely broke off contact with her sister as well. Mel hadn't been the same since. So it was nice to see that this haunted house could spark some excitement in her. We immediately agreed to come back at night to check it out. You sure you're up for it, Rob? Jake joked with a big grin on his face. I've never been the biggest fan of haunted houses. I absolutely cannot stand jump scares, and I don't see why anyone would enjoy the feeling of being surprised by some messed up creature. I also never trusted the actors in those houses. Who says a serial killer isn't hiding underneath them? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I lied. Jake took the first steps towards the big door, and I reluctantly followed. Mel squeezed my hand. Don't worry, you'll be fine, she whispered. As we opened the door, I expected some person to greet us and sell us tickets, but all we saw was a small room with a desk. The walls were gray and naked. There was no paint, no signs or anything. The entire room that hardly fit the three of us had nothing but that tiny desk and a door right next to it. On the desk, we found a piece of paper and a little cash box. Welcome to Harry's Horror House. You will see that this wonderful home is not quite that scary, but rather welcoming and warm. You will enjoy your time here, however long you might stay. All you need to do is follow the signs that lead you through it, and we might see you at the end. Entrance fee optional, but preferred in metal. Optional? Jake asked. And what do they mean by metal? Do we leave anything? I shrugged. Probably following some kind of theme, I guess, but I only have my card. At that point, I silently hoped that we would just leave again. Well, it says optional, right? Jake said. I got it, guys. Mel went through her wallet and got out a couple of coins. That's metal, right? They loudly fell into the metallic box, and suddenly the door automatically opened. I swallowed. Jake grinned. Mel took a deep breath. Ready? She asked, and only Jake nodded. Jake was the first one to walk in. Mel followed, and I walked in last. Like I said, I absolutely despise jump scares and cheap horror, and so I was expecting the worst as we got into the first dark room. After I crossed the step, the door behind me automatically closed again. For a second, I couldn't see a thing, but slowly multiple candles all around the room lit up and parts of the room came into focus. We were standing in something that resembled a living room. In the middle of the room, a candle was placed on a small table. Behind it was a sofa that had sunflowers printed all over it. Another candle was hanging next to an old cuckoo clock that showed the wrong time. I scanned the entire room for eyes or movement, any sign of another person, but there didn't seem to be anyone. I tried to get out my phone for some light, but realized that I had left it in the car. I also didn't ask my friends because I knew they loved these places, and they wanted the real thing. Jake walked up to the table and sat down by the sofa, making himself at home. There's a letter on here, he said. I was wondering what they meant by following the signs. Maybe there's something on there. Mel sat down next to Jake. Is this an escape room? I thought it was a haunted house. I mumbled. Maybe it's both. Jake started reading out loud what was written on the paper. Welcome home, at least for one. Do everything right, 
and three might leave. What the hell? What's that supposed to mean? He asked after he was done. How do they know there's three of us? There's probably cameras outside, Jake whispered. That's kind of cool. But what do we do next? Mel asked. Does it have any other instructions? She grabbed the letter from Jake's hands and turned it around. Rob, come here. She scooched over and made some space for me on the sofa. Then she started reading the backside of the letter. You are guests, for now. Act as such. Afterwards, move on to the next room. Okay, weird. Should we just move on to the next room? This one is kind of boring, Jake said. Mel shrugged. If you can find the door. Jake got up and grabbed the candle that was hanging next to the clock. Before he removed it, I noticed that the time on it had changed by two hours. There it is, he said from the corner of the room. Come on, guys. Mel stayed frozen and so did I. I preferred Jake taking a look first, just in case there was a jump scare waiting. Guests don't open the door. An unfamiliar male voice spoke, and I saw Jake slowly walking backwards. A young man came through the door. He didn't appear much older than us, and resembled a farmer with his denim pants and lumberjack shirt. The weird part was that there was nothing particularly scary about him. Normally, the actors in these places have all sorts of bloody makeup or masks, and they carry real-looking weapons. This was just a regular guy, but there was still something uncanny about him. As he walked up towards where we were sitting, I noticed that he was holding a tray with teacups on it. There were two in total. Have a drink, he said, his eyes focused on Mel. Then his hands started shaking so much that the tray almost fell, but Mel had grabbed it just before it could. She took one of the cups and gave the other to me. The cup was empty. Mel giggled awkwardly and clinked her cup with mine. Cheers, she whispered. The strange guy just stood there, watching us the entire time. All you could hear was his deep breathing. Okay, now I'm starting to get creeped out, Jake said. May we continue now? He jokingly asked the stranger who was still only looking at us. He slowly nodded, and so we got up and walked towards Jake. I turned around one more time and met the eyes of the stranger. I saw the fear in them as he whispered, Please, save me. The door closed behind us, and again we found ourselves in darkness. That was creepy, I said. Well, it's supposed to. It's a haunted house, Mel laughed. No, I agree. This is weird, Jake said. That guy didn't even look scary, and he still creeped me out. Suddenly, the lights turned on. This time, there weren't any candles, but a big fluorescent light on the ceiling. We were in the kitchen. The white tiles on the floor were dirty and sticky. In front of us was a kitchen island. Behind it were the typical things such as an oven, sink, and fridge. This time, the letter was glued to the fridge. Mel and I simultaneously walked up to it, but before I could start reading it, another door opened. A woman with dark hair walked inside. She was wearing an apron and a white mask with holes in her mouth and eyes. She came closer and slowly tilted her head. First, she stared at me and Mel. Then her gaze moved to Jake. Mel grabbed my arm, this time not because she was trying to comfort me. I think she was starting to get freaked out. The woman with the mask stayed silent the entire time, and after a while she started slowly shaking her head. Um, hello miss. Can we move to the next room? Jake carefully asked. The woman pointed towards the note on the fridge which I'd almost forgotten. Mel grabbed it and started reading, her voice breaking in between. A meal is waiting right inside. Take a bite and you will stay. Take none and you will be cut. I opened the fridge and dozens of fruit flies started flying out of it. I almost threw up at the sight of what was in there. On top of a big plate there I saw a rotten ham with maggots crawling all over it. The woman suddenly appeared behind me and pushed forward. She took the plate with the ham outside, and maggots started crawling up her arm. Then she placed it on the kitchen island and got a knife out of a drawer as well as three plates. This was some next-level shit. I'd never seen real insects in one of these houses. She started slicing up the ham and I felt even more sick. There's no way in hell I'm eating that, Mel exclaimed. It's gotta be fake, right? Jake came closer. The woman with the mask cut up the first slice put it on a plate, 
and tried handing it to me. Um, no, thank you, I mumbled. Well, it says to eat the meal or get cut. Jake laughed. Yeah, fuck the... Before I could finish, the woman grabbed my arm and slid the knife along my lower arm. Blood started dropping from my sleeve. What the actual... This was real blood. I felt real pain. This couldn't be right. We never consented to any of that. I pulled my arm away and tried to grab the knife from the crazy woman. Jake ran over to help me when suddenly the door opened and a couple of new people walked inside. None of them were wearing masks, but all of them looked somehow messed up. Suddenly, arms grabbed me from all sides, and before I knew what was happening, I was pushed through the door into a new room. I fell to my knees as the door closed shut, and I sat in darkness. Jake? Mel? I shouted, but there was no answer. I couldn't see anything. My body was frozen. A few moments later, the door opened. I got back to my feet and caught a glimpse of my friends. Before I could act, the door was closed again. Rob? I heard Mel's voice as a hand grabbed mine and guided me through the darkness. All around me, I started hearing voices. Please, let me out. Save us. Take me with you. Arms were trying to grab me from all sides, but I kept fighting through. Finally, a door opened. As we passed the final door, I could see nothing in front of me, but I felt the cold of the night hitting my face and knew that we made it outside. I couldn't speak yet. My mind couldn't yet comprehend what had happened. We made it, Rob. Let's go. I heard Mel behind me. Slowly, my eyes adjusted to the dark, and I realized that we were in front of the haunted house again. We'd come out of the front door, which was impossible. The room we just left wasn't the entry we'd come in through, but the car was just in front of us. I unlocked it as I ran towards the driver's seat. I heard the steps of my friends quickly following. The door behind me opened and they jumped in. Let's go! Mel shouted and I hit the gas. My breathing was still heavy, but slowly relief washed over me. Until I took a look at the rearview mirror. First, I saw Mel. Her eyes were filled with tears and she was looking down, gently stroking the dark hair of a person lying on her lap. I came to a full stop. Mel? I whispered. Who's that on your lap? The person slowly lifted up their body. When our eyes met, I couldn't believe myself. Susie? Her eyes were bloodshot. Her face had lost all color. She was dressed in an old skirt and a shirt, as well as an apron. She was the woman in the kitchen. I'm so sorry, Rob. It was the only way to get her out, Mel cried. What was? Where is Jake? They didn't answer. Shit, we need to turn around, I said, but I didn't dare to move. There's no way to get him out, Susie whispered. Harry will take him home. She didn't elaborate on that further. Is this a fucking joke? I'll call the police right now. Mel leaned over and put a hand on my shoulder. You can try. That's what I did last year. But it won't help. How? I don't understand. Mel, if this is some fucking prank, I swear. It's not. I don't understand it completely either. Mel looked at her sister. We went in last year with one of Susie's friends. He was the one who brought us the teacups in the beginning. Anyway, in the end, they cut me and I was outside. Susie and her friend didn't follow. I thought they were messing with me at first. But the next day, the house was gone and so were they. And then I received a letter. I grabbed the wheel so tight that my knuckles turned white. What kind of letter? It had instructions. I'm sorry, Rob, but it said to bring two souls who mean the most to me. It said I could exchange them and get my sister and her friend back. But why am I outside then? I asked. I promised you you'd be okay. I just needed Susie. 